Hello everybody, welcome to game number two of OCAA semi-final actions here at the Ontario Soccer Centre in Vaughan, Ontario. Zach Benoit alongside free kick specialist Federico Leal. And Fed, we just saw the Humber Hawks punch their ticket to the gold medal match. Well, they'll be awaiting the winner of this one. It's the St. Clair Saints taking on the Seneca Sting. We'll step aside for just a moment for our P announcer Dwayne Bowles for the playing of the national anthem. It is semi-final number two between the St. Clair Saints and the Seneca Sting. At this time, I'd ask you if you could please stand if you're able, remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> Like I said, Fed, the winner of this will be taking on the Humber Hawks who just punched their ticket to the gold medal game tomorrow at 4 p.m. Partner, we got two very good teams. Seneca, look out for number 11, Shanice Alfred. 25 goals on the season, 55 points. She had an absolutely incredible year for the Sting, and she'll look to continue that here in the playoffs, try to will her squad to victory. This offense for the Seneca Sting, well, one of the best, if not the best. 85 goals scored, 8.5 goals per game. Partner, they're taking nearly 30 shots a game. And well, their goalie doesn't allow that many goals in. 0.5 goals against average on the season for the Seneca Sting squad. On the other side, St. Clair, 46 goals, 22 shots per game, and a 0.6 goals against average. Up with you 
one of the seventeen Toronto Maple Kick things off underway. Seneca will have first possession here in Looking at some of the awards that were taken home, Women's Soccer Player of the Year, Shanice Alfred, number 11, in white today. Also got to take another look at the Rookie of the Year, Victoria Walsh for St. Clair. A lot of accolades between these two teams. Victoria Walsh actually took home the Rookie of the Year in both divisions, not only in West Division. Overall as well. Let me adjust, okay? Take me off from there. Okay. See your same there. Seems to also be set up in a 4 5 1, similar to a 4 3 3, just a little bit. A lower middle block there, bringing them down to support. Walsh had herself a good rookie campaign. You look at what she was able to do. Led the team in scoring 11 goals, four assists, 26 points for number 11. See how these two teams can fare off against one another. Again, like I said, winner will go on to face Humber. Loser will go to the bronze medal match to take on the Durham Lords. So far early, it looks like Seneca has pushing the pace. Trying to find an opening on that right side, crossing the box, and going to be denied. Cleared out there by Ali Kabash. Corner, Seneca. That'll be number 14, Jessica Shears, on the ball there. Yeah, it is. So let's do this. Ball into the box so here, here, early the on in the game. Doesn't. Good first Doesn't. chance for Seneca. It does, it's just bad. No, no, no. Short cross to the near post, but nobody's going to be there to get it. Victoria Walsh looking to spring a counter attack as Seneca defense transitions back, and she's able to read that one, intercept it. Putting on some good pressure early on. This one in, and a little 1v1 action. Yeah, she's showing why she was took home those Rookie of the Year on honors not only in the, the West Division but also overall on the year. Ball swing into the box. It's high. Able to find another St. Clair player. Seneca will clear this one up for a throw in. Layla Hudson on the ball here for the throw in. Yeah, you could hear that. Pressure there. Tangle up. Exactly. That went out of the danger area. Turning themselves a free kick at the top of the box. So early on, we've seen both sides kind of trying to push an offense here, but for the most part, it was Seneca that had that early advantage, really kind of feeling out this defensive back line of St. Clair. Seneca trying to find an opening. Good little chip ball looking for Martina Pinilla on the ball now. I think I might have to ask him. Recycle this play back him. around yeah, through Kayla Odenberg, one of the two sisters on the Seneca team. Is it the, the, the left or right? Left side? Okay. All chipped into that box. Diva Palermo picking that one up. And you can see on the far side, Shanice Alfred. She had a phenomenal year, like we mentioned, player of the year. St. Clair now trying to head on out, but can't get stopped there by the backside. 
Hoiberg. Shears down that line. And skip past. Lee Vokes there doing a good job to hold that one up. Support from Pania there down the line. So far being able to skip away from that one into the box, swings one in. Can't find connection with anybody. St. Clair holding strong, but the pressure is still being put on here by Seneca. They're gonna go out wide left here. So a lot Greco. of space. Greco looking to have a strike. And it's actually offside by Peralta Fernandez. Who actually blocked the shot there a little bit from an offside position. Is it still tilted? Yeah. I can see it's tilted too. Fernandez just getting a little bit out in front there. Looked on header. I told me yeah. The by Ottomberg. Yeah, he's hot. from Jordan Burke there. Ottomberg's defensive partner at the back, both wearing the armband, leading by example from behind. Heavy contact, Tony Tony there. there. Force of presence That's early on in this game. Being able to hold that one up. It's well put out there by the sister, Kayla Udenberg. out of that one with the ball. Looking for a little bit of a cutback there and ball cut out there by the St. Clair midfield. Able to recycle the ball here. Able to recover that and now they'll try to counter attack here up the right side. But it's gonna sail out of bounds. That was just off the foot of Alexa Ogden. You're not actually dead center, right? St. Clair gets a chance to slip their player through and here early a lot of communication coming from the back lines of both teams. Talks about Jordan Burke wearing the captain's arm sleeve for the side of Seneca. She's been communicating with her side and then you look at the back line number 19, Lily Collins. She's being very vocal for her side and Again, Seneca trying to have an attack here up the right wing. Can they break away from her defender? Unable to, can't get the cross in either. Toss him up there. Jersey pulling that free. Trying to have a word, but we'll let this one play on. Number 10 in green, Alexa Magna fighting for the ball. So throw in here on the side for Seneca. And again, Seneca, they finished first in the East Division, a 9-1 record, 27 points. And then you look at that big differential in their goals. 85 goals scored, only 5 allowed. 
Then you look over at St. Clair, 7-1-2 record, 46 goals scored, six allowed. End of the season on a four game win streak. Trying to come into this one and get to that gold medal match where the Humber Hawks, they're patiently waiting. Bright, even the point is there. Coming back to have a word earlier to angle up. Okay. Seems like the player is bleeding. Force she must be forced off the pitch at the moment. Maybe not. She seems like she's being she will have to. If I heard correctly, it's on the inside of the lip. Is what she said. It's where Magnum, or sorry, Victoria Walsh. That's a key player right there for the side of St. Clair. Walsh, the leading goal scorer and rookie of the year. That's all in behind. Connecting this one. So back to goal. Efficiently built out the pressure instantly from St. Clair. Looking to get that ball back in the final third. Ogden on the ball. Clair is down Clare is for down. the side. Yep. Peralta Fernandez on the ground. They will be halted momentarily. So back onto the field will come Victoria Walsh and the trainer will come on to look at Joanna Peralta Fernandez who gets up and under her own power she looks like she'll be all right. But yeah, so far early part of we haven't really seen either team have any crazy, crazy chances. It's been most more so a feeling out process in the first 14 minutes of this match. Kind of similar to what we saw last match. Yeah, definitely a bit of a Seneca, a bit more on the pushing, pushing forward here, being able to unlock, win that midfield battle so far. St. Clair holding up quite well. Seneca just got a good solution so far for build up. It's a good step there by Andy Zakrowski. Exactly. Sorry, Zachary County in the midfield there. Establishing her presence. Quickly trying to build up here and again. These two teams evenly matched. Very good seasons in the regular season. Trying to get to that gold medal match. Looking to release Shanice down. Play by the defense right there <laughs> on the side of St. Clair. This one will be picked up by Seneca. This is Haley Greco. Brought up back on her feet. Still fighting, still in. 
Working their way down this left hand flank, looking to combine. Cut out well there. And that's number 22, Layla Hudson. Who's really trying to keep, keep Shanice Alfred at bay. She did it already once. In a key moment, Seneca, they're not giving up. They're Rebecca pushing Lee the there. the other way. And spring shears through. She'll fight that one to the end. Collected once again by Scott Fick. left-hand flank. A lot of action on this side so far. It's Lee. Center back today. 
different type of forward than we're used to seeing here. <laughs> She has a shot on target and it's a good save. Need a rebound, but she cleaned it up. It was there. Good chance there for Seneca as they're able to break through some lines through Uddenberg to Peralta. Scotland thick making that big save and coughed up a rebound afterwards. But jumped on it right away now, trying to go the other way. St. Clair. Great step by Uddenberg, cutting that one out. Looks like they're gonna have to change Uttenberg's position on the OCAA website from forward to defender because of what she's been doing so far. It's the first time play there. Bit of a heavy pass from Gatoni. Take one more look at a save here, and again, Scotland thick. You see Fernandez right there, right down the middle, solid hands. You see thick. at the very end of the play too, being there quickly. Rebound there, yeah. not good enough. Alfred was almost there. Leading goal scorer in the OCAA, trying to jump on that rebound, but again, heads up play by Scott Thick. A free kick now down this left-hand side from about 40 yards. Earlier in the other game, we saw a ball from around this area skip right into the back of the net. So definitely a dangerous area to be swinging. Good ball in. Skips pass. Players call for a handball and it's blocked. A little bit of a tangle up in the box and Zerkowski is able to get away with the shot. And it's at the goalie there. I believe it's Christina Diaco with the save hand. I think we saw a bit of a penalty shot there for a handball. Not sure exactly what happened. Shoot it out wide right here, but can't get the ball out enough. You can hear the communication from Seneca to try to spring their players. Just past the 23rd minute here of this game number two, semifinal number two here at the Ontario Soccer Center in Vaughan, Ontario. Redmond on this line. Running out of space. And who else other than Uttenberg to clean that one up? And let's have a look at that set piece for the penalty show. Ball was swung in. Looked like they came up for the header. And it may have come off a St. Clair hand, actually. Bit of a tangle up. And he was there to have the final shot. But hard to tell exactly what happened. Definitely difficult for the referee to see. Or at least she knew exactly what happened from her position. Nothing there. Past a halfway through the half mark. So throw it on the side, lead going for the header, and we'll just make enough contact where it goes out. Either They're trying to spring Shanice Alfred. Alfred last year's space. running down this line. Good darting run as she's able to get try to get to the end of that one. Heads up play by Scotland Fick to come out of the net right there. It was a great play set up by Shanice Alfred. Fick definitely very active so far and just be able to read and probably aware that Seneca is able to spring their players right behind that back line earlier on. And uh, that one up. There's a lot of pace on both wings here for Seneca. They've proven it early on. Nice step up right there. Just dog tries challenge. to skip that. Skip past Greco. Greco saying, not today. So he 
Magnin on the ball here. And she's been relentless and looking to break the spin field from Seneca. Ball called to Seneca. Seneca ball. Ball. this match just like a chess match you know you move one pawn up the other team strikes really back like, man just keep on changing every few nobody wants to be the first team to make that first mistake and this Seneca midfield is very dynamic can't their see wingers the ball, are dude. coming inside and leaving that space in behind to be attacked by their attack midfielders Nia and Peralta who have been very active so far combination there Redmond on the end of this one now. Driving at Ottenberg. Again, good battle. Redmond able to stand again and fantastic tackle. Double tackle there from Ottenberg. Being able to clear that one off Redmond for a goal kick. Redmond a little slow to get to her feet, but again, Carly Ottenberg, I mean, she has looked sensational. Come up with some really key plays on the back line early on for her squad. Short goal kick. Rebecca Lee, she sees some space down the middle, looking to break through and no foul there given. Wash trying to get on the end of that one and she skips by Udenberg, but cleaned up by her partner, Burke. Wash again, still standing, trying to lay one off, off for her. Zachary County there, but. Tried to clear it, but can't get it out. St. Clair is still threatening. Shanice Alfred is standing strong there. Shilling that one out for a throw in. We see the pressure from Walsh, despite the great challenge from Muddenberg there to kind of get the second bounce there for the second chance. But as she thought she had broken through, Burke had come in to recover. His sister there. You see, as Rebecca Lee was looking to dissect that midfield, and calling for the foul, just nothing there really as she pulled that one off and fell. St. Clair get a chance going forward. He has switched the point of it, switches the point of attack here to Burke. As Burke looks up for Shanice. Just slight miscommunication or misunderstanding there between the two. find a solution in front two. Coach not too happy with some of the direct play that's been happening so far with Seneca. They have found success through combining in the middle, but it seems like they feel like they can skip those lines. A short pointer for Peralta. And yeah. Quick, we'll try to get something going. St. Clair cleared it on out. See Walsh. Get on the end of that one, but it's Edinburgh's sister tracking back. Covering that one for Seneca. Bringing a free kick. Carly Edinburgh playing solid defense, and you know, look at her sister Kayla on the other side. Seems like it runs in the family. Tenacity at the back. So far, the Seneca the defense. Physicality too. Holding up very strong. Skidal coming into the box. Trying to shoot a lot of space right here. St. Clair trying to mount the attack. Heads up play. Right there, out of the net. Diaco, Christina Diaco. Phenomenal job to come out. Box. 
for Walsh. Magnin, we got a swing in the box. Nope, not to Magnin, just a little move, but well read there by Pania. Can't get enough power on that cross. Rebecca Lee just clears it on her. Collins there to clean this one up, but just might get another attack. He goes back. Slip one through. It's well cut out there by Ellie Folks. Who read the run. Jessica Shears there. Nothing there. Looks like we have a couple substitutions coming in for both squads. Can't see the players' numbers as of right now. It seems like Alexis Cordero is about to come in for the Seneca team. It's uh, five point six. And we see Kiera Merritt. My apologies. That'll be Alessia Olivido coming in for Zachary County. And for the Seneca Sting, we see Alexis Cordero coming in for Martina Pania. Possibly get some fresh legs here late in the first half. Both teams have kind of just been throwing haymakers at one another, really. Nobody's yet to you know, get that KO punch just yet, the final goal strike. It's been a very physical battle so far. Seneca holding strong at the back, and the same goals for the St. Clair team, who have been very tactically aware of these darting runs by the Seneca offense. right wing. St. Clair gets there first and they're able to get it on back to midfield and again this is where what we've seen on both sides really nobody able to get anything set up in the offensive zone. It's just a battle at midfield right now. Battle there. Greco coming across to cut this one out. You mentioned Mog now all over the pitch. For Alfred, she looks to like, hold that one up against the That's a good little turn, but Alfred reads it. And Seneca free kick. Or sorry, Seneca throwing. Near side here. Little flick there. Alfred combining with Cordero. She looks to spin. Run out of space there. Here, 
right there. Fernandez saying, on the throw-in saying, go to Alexis, go to Alexis, always go to Alexis. And it seems like Alexis coming in is offering something different here for them. But clear and short dealt with. Get another chance for St. Clair here. And third will just clear this one and offer its direction. It seems with the substitution that she brings a little bit more speed and presence in that front line. As they drop down between there into midfield. We see Walsh on it. He won here against Berg. She's got an option to play in. Getting well read there by Gatoni. He can't get past her. She's doing a great job there to be very active. Good feet. She tries to beat her, but Walsh. Great recovery after losing that one. Yeah, Walsh has looked strong in this game so far. And then looking for Walsh again. It's just a little too inside. Cut out by Burke, I believe. And Darryl finally sprung through here one-on-one -on, -one on this right-hand side. Seneca tries to get numbers forward. She skips inside. Good speed on the inner half by Cordero. Gets tripped up. No call. And the ref call save there. play on. Looks like goes out of bounds. So it will be goal kick. Goal kick. Oh, thought it would be a corner there. Thought St. Clair hit that last. Just bounce there off that little play there. And so far, definitely a stalemate between these two teams as other than one Seneca chance on target. Neither team has really gotten a field cut chance so far. And it's been relatively a quiet half for the UCAA Player of the Year, Shady Salford. But you know what that means? You also got to credit Layla Hudson. You know, she's done a really good job at just shutting down Alfred on that left side. Yeah, Layla Hudson seems like she's a great matchup here for her as she's not letting her turn, not letting her get comfortable in this game because we know what happens when Good players get comfortable. They start causing havoc. Hudson up to the task so far today, setting the tone down this right hand side for St. Clair. Yeah, you look on you look on the field to find where Shanice Alfred is. Well, Layla Hudson is always right behind her or just in the vicinity. And it looks like the coach will either want to have a word with Alfred. Maybe just give her a breather. Trying to Stir things up here tactically as we see Faith Metcalf Simiano replacing Alfred. That'll be a St. Clair corner. Good chance here. Swung in near post and swung in a little too much as it comes off the side netting of the goal. Goalkeeper coach here sending some tips to her goalkeeper here. Not very happy with what he saw. As he recognized that if that ball hadn't swung in that as much as it did, it would have been a very dangerous area. And goalkeeper must come out there and claim that as it is in their area. Just entering the 39th minute. And again, both sides, it's just been a chess match to say the least. No team giving up any chances, really. Both sides waiting for the other one to make the first mistake. But realistically, over everything we've seen so far in the 39 minutes played, no mistakes have been relatively made. I mean, both sides are playing very sound defense. It's kind of getting mixy in the midfield. Is there is most of the short pass there, but Burke is able to clean that one up. Continuing on. A free kick there, and like you said, definitely a bit of a chess match. Your man up. Just pull your middle Between down. the two teams here. Okay? The battle in midfield has been very even, therefore, play has been mostly on the wings as they look to find space. mentioned before that partnership of Seneca between Burke and Uttenberg has been very solid they've cut out 99% of all the attacks where St. Clair seems to almost break through but on the other hand the St. Clair 
midfield and center back is partnership. Very solid, very tight together, balanced spaces and a bit of a breakthrough here for Seneca. Best chance we've probably seen right there from the Seneca Sting to get a shot on net. Out of number 12, Faith Metcalf Samani. Yeah, Metcalf just trying to spring onto that flicked on header that just didn't go as planned. And, uh, she found the end of that. She just needs to poke it to go through, and it seems like a good, good, good chance on goal. Yeah, just got a little bit away from her. Barbero cut out. Well defended there by St. Clair as they run out of space, and it looks like the ball just went out. <laughs> Lily Collins again, very solid at the back. Trying to look to the standard set here by Huddenberg. First half by both sides. Look at who will break the deadlock first. Seneca has been in control, which feels like majority of the half. And here we'll see the replay of that play as that ball was flipped on and. She was, able, she was actually able to get on the end of that one and just not able to come to control to be able to get her shot off. The play by Burke right there to fill in. Uttenberg was out of position. Burke just came in nicely, filled in the gap. Here as she looks to swing one into the back post. Shears. Again. Scotland kick. Positioning. Being able to clean that one up as Shears tried to put that one back into the danger zone. Yeah, Jessica Shears. Man. She's had a good season. Nine goals for her on the year. Yeah, we can see what she brings in terms of speed. And she's kind of got that intuition in that final third about where the ball's going to be. Hold that one up as she looks to turn. She's looking up. Can she find one? She finds his Annenberg on the ball. Off the post and in. And beautiful goal there for Seneca as Annenberg sneaks that one past off the post. Jessica Shearer's through ball. Kayla Annenberg. Like you said, able to get that one off the post. Take another look at it here. I mean, great like said play. Talk about Jessica Shears having nine goals on the season, but what about her assisting? Oh, there it is. She looks up, swings a beautiful ball in behind the defense, and Jessica Shears on that overlapping, sorry, not Jessica Shears, Kayla Uddenberg on that overlapping run. Being in the right place, just being able to put down the possibility and off the post and in. I think what the fit could do there. Yeah, tied for second on the squad with seven assists. Only one assist behind Alexis Cordero. 
showing she's not just a creator, not just a goal scorer, but also a creator. Yeah, Jessica Shears, I mean, what a, what a pass into the box, and Kayla Eichenberg finishes it right off the post, and talking about it being a chess match, well, there's the first move and first mistake captured on. Seneca takes a 1-0 lead late here in the first half. We are in the 45th minute, so we are gonna be in this stoppage time. Yeah, and you could really see there when Shears picked up the ball in midfield, she really had her mind of going forward and realizing the space she left in behind as she came inside to that midfield. Putting the ball into a danger area like that. When Hardenberg's uh, overlapping run there leads to some beautiful goals. Trying to create another chance late here, but gets snuffed out. St. Clair holding strong, but no wait. A minute again. One minute of Shears stopping spinning on the spot there, keeping the ball. Similar to how she did leading up to that goal. Rebecca Lee trying to set up something here. Alexis Cordero can't find it. And St. Clair will try to bounce out of their zone. Cordero gets it. That'll do it for a first half action. I mean, partner, what a first half it was. It was a, a chess match for, the, for basically the first 43 minutes and then took things over was Seneca getting that first goal of the match off of a beautiful play from Jessica Shears and an even better finish from Kayla Uttenberg. We'll take one more look at the goal. And as we were speaking of Kayla, or uh, Jessica Shears here, her mind to it deciding I'm going to put the ball in the dangerous area on the way to find defense here. Uh, the second assist here. Really the first one here to score. Uttenberg. Overlapping run that you kind of see here in the sun as she sneaks in behind. Nothing else but just a left foot. That's was a left side, right? That's a big sun, uh, like sun rays coming. No matter like how zoomed in or zoomed out, it's beautiful pass. I I did like zoomed in, but that's still it's not good. Even if you zoom out or zoom in, it's still like a ball that will go to something else. So that'll be it for the first half of action. Go get yourself a glass of water, use the bathroom, do whatever you gotta do, but don't go anywhere. Come back, because we still have second half action. And like I said before, winner goes to the gold medal match to face the Humber Hawks. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back to second half action here of semifinal game number two between the Seneca Sting and the St. Clair Saints. Zach Benoit alongside Federico Leal. And Fed, what a first half it was. We saw that late goal happen, but roughly I want to say in the 44th to 45th minute but by Seneca. And other than that, it was a really deadlocked first half. Yeah, I think the clock had just ticked past 45. We were just into the added time there. And Seneca getting that very important goal before half to put something down on paper for all that hard work they put out in the first half and it's definitely been a tactical head to head here between the St. Clair Saints and the Seneca Sting. Lots of quality on the field, lots of great players and uh, let's see what the second half holds out for us. Would like to see St. Clair push up a little bit higher, maybe find their wings a little more and getting Walsh on the ball again. 
as Magnin is looking forward here. Here we go, Walsh, an opportunity. Nice play by the keeper to come out. Heavy collision there, both players took a second to get up. Seems like a bit of a trailing foot there that may have struck the goalie in her head. Looks like she'll be all right, but yeah, a smart play to come out of her own net and to get that ball. Walsh was pressuring immediately, and I think that's something that if you're St. Clair, you gotta do early on here. We saw it happen in the last game where Durham, they really put the pressure on and the attack on early in the second half. They were ended up tying that one. St. Clair, this is what exactly what you need to do as well. Just get that early pressure. And another key player for St. Clair was Magnin, who is so active on both sides of the pitch there. And if they're able to find her in some more dangerous areas, a little bit more advanced, she can definitely cause some more damage. As Walsh here on the ball, looking to turn and squeezed out by Burke. Yeah, number 10 in green, Magnin. I mean, what a first half she had. Really facilitated the midfield really, really well. Cordero. Sizing her, her player looking to run around her. But player who had a big impact in that first half coming in late actually was Alexis Cordero. Yeah, Cordero offering some of that speed and pace that they need, but also some intensity on and off the ball with some darting runs, looking to stretch that St. Clair defense out. And here's a goal scorer, Kayla Edinburgh, with a darting run for that beautiful goal there, showing her offensive instincts. Should be a free kick there. Short. Shears heads up to Peralta. Peralta driving into the box. It's a dangerous error cutting that one across the, the box. And Cordero cleaning up the loose ends back to Shears. Shears had a huge first half. Really the player that impacted the team the most. You see there fighting off multiple St. Clair defenders. and. It's kicked out of bounds. It'll be a throw in here for Seneca. But really, in the second half, if you're the Seneca Sting, look at players like Shears and Cadero to make some big plays for you. Two players that had their name all over the first half. Peralta holding this one up. Looking to maybe squeeze her way past all around the line. Combining there with the Edinburgh. Combo. Beautiful little play as she sneaks back into the box, putting that one in with her left foot. Looking to get a tip on that one. Goalkeeper, Thick, who was another major player for the Saints in the first half. And again, it's Kayla Uttenberg, who was the lone goal scorer off the post and in in the first half. And then this starting off the second half hot as well. Tony there. Great presence in the midfield ever since she dropped back. Or Compose brings that one down. And looking for Cordero right away with a nice little flick down that line. Just a little too much behind it. And uh, we'll have a look here at that previous play. Here it is, as Unenberg combined with Peralta, being able to skip past the box and looking to use her left foot again, showing that she can, but not enough juice behind it. It's a good look, good save there. Here we are again. Free kick. Shears draws the free kick there, causing trouble for the Saints again. As Unenberg calls this one. Stand on this free kick, spinning the ball into position, and looking like they're sending good numbers into the box now. Burke short, but skips the Peralta with the flick, and a beautiful header there by Gatoni, almost chipping the goalie there from beautiful 
maybe unintentional set piece there. Peralta Fernandez with a beautiful flick in behind, knowing where the danger area is. Good Tony can chip it, but just a little too much sauce behind that one. There she is. Good Tony, great header. And still the pressure here on this left side. Again, Alexis Cordero doing a lot of the work here on the far right hand side. Seems like this has been where the main parts of the attack have been. Don't want it getting on the end of that one. Second that one back towards Cordero who finds Uttenberg battling down here. Again with her left foot looking to put one into the box. And it looks like that's gonna be a free kick. A dangerous area for about 20, 23 yards on this right hand side. Good opportunity to swing one in, or maybe a left footer can have a strike there. Question being, who's going to be the one to take it here? Looks like it's going to be Peralta Fernandez there. I'm not sure if it's going to be Spears sure. or Shears, Fernandez. definitely. Shears on the ball there, looking to put another dangerous ball in. We know she can, especially after that one in the first half. Looking, keep an eye out for Gatoni. Who's trailing in on that back post. Shears swings one in. Falls to Gatoni. Can she bring it down? And she has a strike and just too much again. Is not able to get over the ball. And that's a that's a great chance there as the ball bounced on her chest, bringing that one down with her head and quickly reacting, trying to get that shot off as quickly as possible. But bit too frantic there putting that one well over the bar yeah and it looked like the pass was initially intended for Alexis Cordero and then Gatoni just getting to it instead very good chance Seneca coming out strong here in the second half really smothering any momentum St. Clair was trying to build Huttenberg looking for Gatoni it's cut out by Smacker County Greco looking for Lee. Lee spins, keeping her composure in midfield. Burke looking for Peralta, who is running away there, looking for the running behind, but again, well cut out by Uttenberg. Looking to slip Cordero through, and she's not able to keep her feet on, keep her feet up there. As they apply some more pressure, chasing that second goal. Sinclair not able to break out, not yet. Here, a good ball for Walsh. Walsh is able to turn, it's squeezed by, squeezed by Uttenberg. Yep. Second chance here. This right-hand side of the field has really been worked well, and they're doing a good job just kind of pushing up the attack. You kind of see multiple different players. Kayla Uttenberg getting involved. They look at Jessica Spears, and then as well as Alexis Cadero. Those three have just been really on fire here to start off the second half. Seneca, they're trying to put out a statement, get the second goal of the match. Lee. First time to get Tony. Good Tony tries to flick it onto Cordero. Just a little wide there. Ball, ball falls to Shears as she tries to put one in behind for Peralta, but too much on it again. As Scotland Fick picks this one up and tries to set her team up for a build up. As you mentioned it, you mentioned it early on in the half. Scotland Fick, she's had a really good match, you know. Yes. Obviously that one goal is a little bit of a stinger. But it comes off a fantastic shot off the post from Kayla Huttenberg. Other than that, though, Fick has looked really dominant, very steady between the pipes here for the side of St. Clair. Yeah, and she's been very aware of her spaces. She knows where the danger areas that Seneca are trying to attack in, so she's able to anticipate some of those through balls and cut them out before the likes of Shears or Cordero are able to get on the end of them. A lot of space here for Alexis Cordero, trying to cut through the middle. Cordero looks Shot on strike. net! What a Whoa. save! Scotland, Fick getting up there. As that one was sailing for the top corner. Fick there to block that one out. And one more look at it right here. I mean, you were just it's saying how good of a game she's having. Head down, keeping knows exactly where the goal is, putting a beautiful strike on target there. And it was actually sailing for that top corner. Fick, another great save there, keeping this game at a one goal lead corner. Jessica Shears on the ball. Sun in her eyes. 
sailing into a beautiful area there as Lee tries to karate kick that one back into the dangerous area. But Burke saves that one from going out. Shear tries to battle and it's cut out by Jessica Dahl. And let's have a look from behind there. That back angle of Daryl shot and stretching out to save that one with one hand thick. Beautiful save. Still 1-0 here in the 57th minute. Yeah, full extension on that save. Tried to get the ball through there, could not. And we know the St. Clair team can fight back despite the scoreline and some of that pressure being applied by Seneca. If they're able to withstand some of that pressure and keep themselves in the game, don't count them out. Again, this is a St. Clair team that finished 7-1-2 and two on the season. Just behind the Humber Hawks, who took home the West Division title. This St. Clair's team, very, very strong. Led by rookie Victoria Walsh again. Had a fantastic campaign. Ball sent through here. Trying to get a step on the outside, but Kayla Uttenberg, have yourself a day. Yeah, so far, definitely one of the players of the match here. Coming across very solid defensively. St. Clair just not able to find her composure here. And again, Cordero on the ball, running forward. Metcalf, Samana. Couldn't get to that one, a good chance. Throw in here on the far left side. Heavy contact, no call though. Fernandez trying to get into the box. Trying to slip around one defender. Does she get around both? No, ball goes out of play. And it'll be a corner kick far left side. Looks like Fernandez will be the one to take the kick. You see Gennady setting up there in the top part of the box towards the back post. Now comes into the middle. Set play for her, but ball goes all the way through to the opposite side. Not sure if it hit off any St. Clair players. It did not. So it'll be a Saints throw in. There, Burrow on the ball there. Throws that one in. Kayla just first time into the danger area. What's going to happen here? Layla Hudson on the ball dealing with it. Layla Hudson, again, another player who's had a, who had a very good first half, really shut down. Shanice Alford, who we saw go out of the game, haven't seen her come back, and a little bit surprised by that partner. Yeah, and uh, it seems like the coach is happy with what's happening on the field so far, and no changes from what happened, how the team ended on that first half. The same team back out there, and I think he's gauging this one by the minute on how this one will play out. As Shears holds her player up, looks up. Finding Cordero, Cordero with that darting run. Again, Cordero has just brought a burst of speed off the bench. Find Shears again. Shears looking for a different point of view here. We see Uttenberg inverted here. A lot as of right room. Back, taking her space, cutting in, laying one off there as she may have drawn a foul. And it's a wonderful spot there to draw a foul. Very central. Just over 20 yards or so. Beautiful run there. Again, Berg just yeah, recognizing where the space is and being able to take players on in dangerous areas and drawing that foul from Zachary County there, who's just a little late as she slips that one past her. And uh, we will see. I believe again it'll be Jessica Spears taking the kick, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Kayla Uttenberg, you know, we were talking about her sister in the first half a lot too because some of the defensive plays she was making. Well, she said, hey, don't forget about me here. Yeah, exactly. Making big plays, had that lone goal, and then now is just kind of elevated the game a little bit more. Yeah, and we'll see that Shears here on a beautiful free kick. We'll probably look to bend this one around the far right hand side. And she tries to go over and through the middle. Not the best of strikes from there. You want to see her hit the target from such a wonderful area. And St. Clair. 
happy with this one as they continue. one nothing for Seneca. Tony gets a hold of this one. Nice little Maradona. Plays Peralta Fernandez. Running into Cordero. Cordero trying to find her way in a very tight space. And it's cleared out. Again, relentless pressure from the Seneca Sting. Yeah, really, they've taken over this game. You know, at the first, beginning of the first half, really through the for first 43 minutes, we saw it was just back and forth. It was a chess match. Once Seneca got that first goal, they jumped on the pressure. They've had the pressure ever since. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that goal is a reflection of how the game's gone so far. Although this thing may feel like they have at least one or two more in them. Down will be offside. Yeah, and you'd, you'd think the opposite would happen, right? You'd think Seneca, or excuse me, St. Clair would be the team to come out with a little bit more aggression, trying to create some more plays, because they're down, play a little bit more reckless than they were playing before. But now it's, it seems just like Seneca's taking that approach. They're saying, hey, we got a one goal lead, let's just go out there and put as much pressure on this St. Clair squad as we possibly can, and that's exactly what they've been doing. Yeah, and uh, that's exactly it. Seneca just fighting a little stronger, really taking this game by the grip here, and not allowing St. Clair any real chances to really even build out. St. Clair struggling so far to create anything substantial. Again, and something else we heard in the first half when the throne's on the side here. They're saying, always go to Alexis, look for Alexis. And they're doing the same thing here. They have Alexis Cadero. She's just slowly working up the field. And she kind of seems like the focal point for this attack here on this right-hand side. Yeah, she just applies so much pressure and her intensity on and off the ball rewards them. And it's like those little balls that they're able to get back, especially with all these throw-ins and they add up, right? All these little extra possessions of keeping the ball over the entire course of the game allows Seneca to stay in control. As you see there, she's happy just holding the ball up and wonderfully done there to gain another corner. Shears on the corner. Now that the, sun, the sun's gone away, she may have a better look. I can see now. Thank <laughs> God for those clouds. Yes, and Shears, this one's a high one. Cleared out by Zachary County. There was a foul there from Gatoni as she tried to leap that one. Leap onto that one and a foul to St. Clair. Player. And again, it's just all the pressure is being applied from Seneca onto St. Clair. They're really not allowing them to do anything right now. Like I mentioned, you thought it would go the other way. You th you'd think that St. Clair would play with a little bit more aggression coming out of the half, but no, they've just been held on their back foot, and you got to credit Seneca for that. And look at this, Cadero crossing into the box, looking for the back post. Can't just get ball anybody. Back into the dangerous area. Clear that. Hudson, not really with much options there. As she knew she had a player running in behind her. Dangerous square ball across the box there. But thankfully, no one there to clean that one up. <laughs> You see Walsh flicks this one on. Kingsley Klo working her way down this line and she'll draw a foul there from Uttenberg who, unlike her so far in this game, is late to that one and will earn herself a yellow for a dangerous tackle there. Try to tackle from behind it looked like right there and yep, gets the yellow card. So it'd be a three, three person wall here. Kingsley Klo just finally showing a spark of attack and being able to turn that into a dangerous free kick here. We know Magnon can put one on target or in, in the box there as St. Clair will definitely look to push here. And if they can score now, Big. this game will be turned on its head despite all the pressure from Seneca who are putting quite a few numbers in this wall. And you said it, Mag now has a chance to tie things up. Here's the strike into the box right on net. Big save. Big save there from Diaco. Again, Diaco has been very active in her net as well. We saw her make a great save early on in the half, and well, she's being active already here 
big kick here to Spears, but gets hit away by St. Clair. Meg now grabs it in the midfield, trying to create some space, going out wide, but cut off. As we see Greco going down this line and looking to slip one through. But Layla Hudson has been a staple point of defense today. She most definitely has. And again, there she is cutting out every pass she can. Just went out for throwing. Lee. Shears battling for that one, tracking back to win it. Here we'll see the first change in the second half by St. Clair. To look to make some tactical and personal changes. As we'll see, Brianne Vieira coming in, as well as Alexis Constantin and Lily Jass. So coming. three substitutions, like you mentioned there, for the side of St. Clair. Try to get some fresh legs on the pitch Alec and try Kadosh, to get back here. Taking a break. Jessica Dahl and Brianna Kingsley Clo. And that one's misjudged by the goalkeeper for a little rebound. Oh. Cortero unable to keep that one on target. And a bit of a misunderstanding there between the goalkeeper and her center back as the ball was put right in between them. And yeah, no and one you, really you can claiming hear, for that one. You can hear Scotland Fick. She's saying, move, move, as she was trying to get to the ball. And it was, I believe, I believe that was Metcalf Samani. Yeah, or Samana, one, excuse that me. That was a great chance there for Seneca to really try and put this, start to put this one away with an open net chance for Cordero. Ball was in the air, it was a bit of a volley, and she stretched that one out, so definitely a difficult task. You gotta think if that one strikes net by Cordero, looking at a very different kind of game here as we are heading into the 68th minute. This game just absolutely flying by, non-stop action. Throw and cut off by Uttenberg. Metcalf, Samana. Cordero, back across. Oh! Couldn't get a foot on it. And Gatoni scuffs the great play there. Just another beautiful chance built up there through some beautiful one-touch combination. And Gatoni unable to really get a clean strike on that one. Fick happy to pick that one up. Pressure heavy here by Seneca. St. Clair just trying to get out of their own Once zone. They mistake. can't do it. Gatoni with the first time play. Metcalf, Samana tried to set up. Cordero right there, but couldn't get it. St. Clair still keeping the ball in and in their own zone. Have control, try to create a play here. Walsh just misreads it. And then Carly Uttenberg, the other Uttenberg sister, making the play right there. Connecting with her sister. Kayla looks to spring through Shears, but it's well cut out. St. Clair showing a little bit of life here, battling in midfield, trying to get onto the second loose balls. As Look at Cordero. Peralta. A lot of pace out of Alexis Cordero right there, but I think another big thing to note is this back two of the center back duo of Jordan Burke and Carly Uttenberg, I mean, it's like a wall, partner. <laughs> Nothing has gone by them. Absolutely great understanding between the two of the spaces. And uh, all the loose balls have been cut out very well and professionally to not just cut them out, but spark some attacks here. 
as Katoni creates some space for herself. And if, I'm, shot if I'm using my FIFA terms correctly, when you're building your team, that's that back center back duo, 10 out of 10 chemistry. Oh yeah, green links. <laughs> green links everywhere. Cordero tries to bring that one down, and it looks like she, she was, they're calling for a foul, but Layla Hudson there coming across to clear that one off. Look like a foul in the box, penalty shout, but nothing there. And Carly Uttenberg stepping up once again. I mean, it, you just can't get past her on defense, it feels like. Take one more look at that tackle in the box there. Yeah, ball was flicked through into the dangerous area. And look like she did get to it first there, Cordero and Hudson just a little bit late. But nevertheless, ball play continues. Yeah, that looks like. Layla Hudson shifts over from right back to that right, that left, left center, center back. back. Exactly. Shears, Peralta, combination, heavy pass. St. Clair throwing. Good turn there. And Burke comes in strong to clear that one. You see Burke took a huge kick on that one and right coming to the right stomach. Through. Yeah, coming right through Constantin, who ended up on the rough, on the bad end of that stick. As she uh, got the follow through, it seems like right through her stomach or to that lower abdomen area. Probably winded. As players are able to recoup here, a bit of a water break as she gets back onto her feet. And the little things you just don't notice right there, Jessica's Excuse me. Shears. Shears, thank you. She was actually over there helping Saint, the St. Clair player that is down and saying, hey, keep your hands above your head, breathe in through your nose. So good sportsmanship shown by number 14 in white right there. Yeah, there's other things we love to see there. She definitely seems like she got winded. Definitely takes a few seconds to catch her breath and nose hurt. Yeah, catching a, a boot square to the stomach. I mean, that'll always knock the wind right out of you. Player still down. Looks like there might be a substitution. And yeah, you just you just hate to see it. So we're just going to take a quick break right here for the game. And we'll be right back as obviously we'll allow the player to get attended to. Safety and player health is number one here in the OCAA. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and 
for the delay. It was an injured player on the side of St. Clair Saints, number 11, first-year player Alexis Constantine. She has been taken to the nearest medical facility, and we are hoping for a fast and speedy recovery for her. Wish her all the best. She is en route right now to the nearest medical facility. But we will resume the game back at the 71st minute. The officials have declared that we will go back to the time of the injury. We won't go into stoppage time because of how long it took and whatnot. We will go straight back to the 71st minute. So we will continue the game on from there. If you are just tuning in, you're wondering what is, what's happened or where we are right now. Seneca took a 1-0 lead in the first half after striking back just before the half ended. It was a roughly the 43rd to the 44th minute they scored. Up until this point, Seneca has really just been dominating overall of what's been going on. And then the injury happened here in the 71st minute. Again, that player, Alexis Constantine, has been taken to the nearest medical facility. We are informed that she is okay. She got up on with the help of others and was taken to the nearest medical facility in an ambulance. Right now, the officials are just talking to both the Seneca Sting as well as the St. Clair coaching staff regarding extra time possibly being added on or not. But from this point, we are starting at the 71st minute with Seneca still leading one to nothing. So once the ref blows the whistle, the time will start again. It'll be Shears kicking off the ball here for the side of Seneca, or excuse me, Jordan Burke. Yeah, and your typical added time will be added at the end of the 90s, just like any other game. The time was accounted by the clock coming back. So here we go again. Again, we'll get action underway here between the St. Clair Saints and the Seneca Sting. Again, the winner will go on to the gold medal match tomorrow to face the Humber Hawks, who won the first match of the day. And we are back underway here. Up until this point, it's really just been Seneca dominating the attack, dominating really the entirety of the game. St. Clair, now you gotta try to get back on the horse. Obviously, your concern is with your teammate and if they're gonna be all right, but best thing you can do is play your hearts out for her right now. Possession in their own territory, St. Clair trying to mount something here to get the tie down by one after a goal off the boot of Kayla Uddenberg in the 43rd minute we look around and a bunch of players have had really good days for the side of Seneca you look at Ud Uddenberg you look at uh, Shears and then you look at Cordero yeah and great ball into the box there and is that one going to slip one slip in but Thick there, picking up right where she left off. Yeah, somebody on the side of St. Clair that's had a really good day. Scotland Thick, I mean, she has been sensational between the pipes. Out of bounds on the sidelines, and me and you were talking during the big st stallation right there of everything that was going on. Got to tip your cap to Jessica Shears. She actually went over yeah, to the player that was down. There. Yeah. Fantastic. And, uh, ensuring that there's something more than the game sometimes. So taking care of your opponents and ensuring just giving them that extra hand or word goes a long way. Yeah, and obviously in the OCAA, player safety and health is number one priority. You never want to see somebody go down with an injury. Obviously, we all know it can happen. And here we are, Cordero, top of the box. Coming across to her left, looking to have a strike blocked. That'll be a penalty as a point blank shot. Will came off the hand of the St. Clair player. And we'll have a look right here as Cordero shoots this one to her left. Rebound was blocked. And from point blank there it was handballs behind this stuck out just a little bit too much for the referee's liking. And deemed the penalty. 
You can see the frustrations on the side of St. Clair. Really, they haven't had anything really go their way here. And it looks like it will be Shears taking the penalty kick here. Will it be Shears, Shears adding... Scotland Fick. Yep. Will it be Shears adding another tally on the board for her side? Or will it be Fick coming through big once again? A yellow card issued right there to number 19, Lily Collins. She was the one that had the handball. She obviously did not agree with the call. Yeah, and always going to be the conversation about the handball especially when it's that close what can the player really do in the natural hand position or not uh, is it affecting the trajectory of the play there and I think that's exactly what the referee deemed that the ball would have probably struck the target had it not been for the hand so Any Jessica Shears sort. here we go like I said Shears versus Fick who will come through here's the kick bottom corner Shears Prevails 2-0 for the Seneca Sting. Shears buries that one into the bottom left corner comfortably and confidently. Actually has been this entire game. And allowing Fick no chance there to get down for that one. Very nice we'll and low. Right there. That's how a good replay here. Shears steps it up and just plays it into the bottom left corner. Just a good old reliable penalty. Fick tries to guess it. Too hard. Let's see an angle from behind. Just a reaction time. You can see just how good of a strike that was bottom right corner. So it's still, the game is still within reach if you're St. Clair. They say in sports, a two-goal lead is the most dangerous. Exactly. And unfortunately, some of this, uh, the intensity was sucked out of the game by the unfortunate incident throughout. But... This game must be completed, and uh, Seneca is picking up right where they left off. Yeah, and I mean, we saw the dominance in the first half, really, for the first 40 to 42 minutes, it was just back and forth action. Both sides were just doing everything they could, didn't want to be the team to make the first mistake, and then ultimately and unfortunately, it was the side of Seneca making, or excuse me, the side of St. Clair making that first mistake. Seneca bounced on it off the goal from Kayla, and now they're trying to add on more. Burke has a shot blocked. Looks like they wanted another handball on the call, but obviously that time nothing the defender could do. Burke just shot it right at her. Yeah, and it didn't seem to even hit a, a hand from there. Or just the back or a side as her hand was definitely tucked in on that attempt. Kick does not go as far. Shears takes it. Shears slips one through. Shears again. Comes off of her from a good tackle there from the St. Clair Saints player. St. Clair trying to push up an attack here. Magnon chasing that one down is Gatoni. Good body, just great battle there. Just a wonderful battle between the two and maybe a little bit of David and Goliath there in terms of size, but Gatoni able to see that one out. Again, and Alexa Magnon for the side of St. Clair. She's had a really good day, the fourth year player. Starting 10 games, four goals, 12 assists, 20 points. Really makes her impact known on the pitch. Yeah, and then there, there you saw Gatoni, who stands at six feet tall, as opposed to Victoria Walsh, who's able at 5'3", small but mighty. There's one thing I've learned. Height doesn't measure heart. H-D-M-H. Good old Marcus Stroman slogan right there. I like that one. And again, with a two-goal lead here and being late into this game, you know, Seneca has just allowed themselves to have that kind of, you know, play a little bit passive mentality, draw out some of the clock. The other side of St. Clair, you got to kind of put it into overgear right here. Peralta looking to send Cordero through.
Trying to go out here to Mognan. She has room and she has some speed. Trying to nice beat feet. her defender. Nice, nice little, little move. Over. Tries to chip this one back. Pulls. Wonderful ball, but brilliantly collected by Christina Diaco, who asserts her dominance in her six yard box there. And a beautiful play from Magnon. Yeah, and Diaco, she's had a good game as well. Just said it. Height doesn't measure heart, and she's showing it here on the pitch. Shears driving through the middle. It's a beautiful slip there as she looks to connect with. And it's just cut out by St. Clair there very well. And let's have a look again at Diaco's claim here as Magnon was sent through beautifully. A nice little step over. Gets past her defender. But just enough to get across into a dangerous area, but Diaco safe hands. Going up there getting it herself. Good job by the goaltender. She was a little hunched over afterwards when the play's on the opposite side of the field holding her back, and coach is asking her if she's okay. She says, I'm all right, I'm okay. Don't think there's anything that'll take her Malta out of this game. To Gatoni, and Gatoni finally gets her own, setting herself up on that one, and wonderful set piece. Gatoni finally gets a goal after she's been knocking on the door multiple times throughout this game, and really, Kind of setting herself up off of that wonderful pass from Peralta Fernandez. Here we'll see the exact moment yeah, as Emma, the ball came in. Emma Gatoni, like you said, she's been knocking on the door really all game long. She had five in the regular season. She gets her first right here. Yeah, as she tries to head that one initially, but realizes the ball's coming a little short. Thighs it up to herself, and just a wonderful touch to really lay herself up for a header point blank, and she won't make a mistake from there. Here we see Seneca taking the lead in the 81st minute after that Gatoni third goal. We'll see Greco retired for this game as she's put in quite the shift and as Seneca feels like they're putting this one away, they'll be bringing in fresh, fresh legs, the legs of Bianca Mora. Just nine minutes left here in regulation time. Lee clears this one. Cordero on the end of it. Finding Mora. Fresh legs here on the ball. Mora slips one through and a little late as the offside gets called. And again, Scotland thick in net. I mean, she's trying to keep her team in it as best as she possibly can. Got to tip your hat to the goalkeeper for the side of St. Clair. Really has done a lot today. Shears, wonderful move there to let this one run past her. Turning as she's one-on-one -on -one here. She tries to swing a strong cross in, but runs out of real estate. And Shears has been all over the pitch so far today. We just saw her right there on that attempt. But, I mean, set up the goal earlier on in the game. Fantastic footwork. And this right side attack has just been lethal for Seneca. You look at Uttenberg, you look at Shears. Fernandez doing a lot of good work as well, number 17. Her, her hard work has gone definitely a little bit under the radar. She's been so active all over the place, being the link between the midfield, the wingers, the strikers. And uh, sometimes the midfielders don't get the credit that they deserve. But as for players of the game, we definitely got to consider this right hand side between Uttenberg and Shears. Shears providing that assist and being a prominent player throughout this whole game and uh, getting them one of her own through that penalty. Here we see Kayla Uttenberg and slip another one in. And it's honestly just a delight seeing wing backs inverting into different positions, occupying some open spaces through their tactical setup here. Seneca has been brilliant in terms of their formation here and allowing their players to flow into the spaces that they thrive the most. And there's just so much speed on this Seneca attack. You look at Codero, she's been 
all over the field, running lights out. Yeah, and even Gatoni, another shout for a player of the game. They're really just solid player ever since she started in the in the center forward role. She started coming in deep and being that point of point of interest for them. But coach quickly realized she had a presence to be uh, presence to be shown in this game in midfield. And ever since she's moved there, she hasn't looked back. Winning so many tackles, create a lot of interceptions, being on the end of a lot of loose balls, and obviously knocking on the door so many times until she finally put away her own and really making this 3 0 lead a comfortable one for the Seneca Sting in these last few minutes of the game. For sure, looks like it'll be free kick right here after that call was made on Burke, who was going up the field. But yeah, really, you look at the time remaining and the score deficit, and it's looking like it's going to be a rematch of last year's OCAA finals in Humber versus Seneca. Yeah, a true rivalry over the last few years between the two, the red and blue, the blue and the red. And uh, Humber looking to defend their, national, their provincial championship. And Seneca looking to get their revenge. Here we see Gatoni on the ball, so comfortable with both feet there, and just turning around. Kill looking for that ball, that reverse through ball. Nice little turn by Magnon, little dummy there. As she catches Mora with a nifty move. Sinclair now building up just a little bit through middle here. As they try to send Walsh through, who gets a touch on. See Kingsley Clo there, trying to get on the end of it. Ball swing in, blocked by Burke, and scooped up by Diaco. Looks like we're gonna have plenty of substitutions coming in here for the side of Seneca. We'll look at Bianca Mora. One of them. Alexandra Rimaldo. Ella Pregno. And I can't see the number of the last player there. And uh, the last one will be. Is it Caitlin Kamara? Number seven, I believe. Seven. Martina Bania, who was in earlier in the game. Making a reappearance here. Cordero gets a slip here. A lot of room in the box. She's looking oh, for her first. One. Nice defensive play again. Who else but Layla Hudson? And we'll see Burke coming off. Lee coming off. The goal scorer, Uddingberg, coming off. And the other goal scorer. Tony retired for the game. Great set of players there for the Seneca Sting. He truly made a big difference in today's outcome. So yeah, four substitutions made right there, and corner kick here from Seneca, well, going uh, to the middle. Off couple bodies, another shot finds the back of the net, and there it is. Shears on the end of another loose ball in the box, and. No mistake from there as she buries that one into the top shelf of the net. Yeah, who else but Jessica Shears? I mean, she's had herself a Wonderful very, game. very good game. Really establishing her dominance too in this game and putting the stat sheet to talk about her game, not just for the amount of pressure she's put, the relentless energy, the up and down, the creation, but now also goals. Just a player, a wonderful player here for the Seneca Sting. Yeah, she's made a big impact. Definitely will be in the discussion for a player of the match. I mean, she's done a little bit of everything for her squad. Yeah, with two goals and one assist, there is a submission on its own. Bit of a misunderstanding there as Kingsley Clo gets on the end of that one. Looking to turn her player, does brilliantly, puts one in the box, but blocked. And this late outburst of offense is just really showing why Seneca had the most goal scored, 85 on the year. 
Wow. Partner, we were, I was looking at their schedule. They had a 20 goal game. <laughs> 20 goals is quite a few. You, some teams don't score 20 goals in a season. So to see that happen is uh, quite the feat. That's got to be some sort of record. We'll definitely have to look into it to see one of the most, which what games are that lopsided. Because again, you don't typically see that in soccer. just all the way down again. That was Carly Uttenberg, the sister of the goal scorer. And, I mean, she's had herself a really good game at center back. We talked about it earlier on in the game and what she was able to do, the impact she's had. And, I mean, well, it kind of shows why. You know, no goals allowed. I'm not really sure how many attempts St. Clair's even had. Yeah, it's definitely under a handful. And really setting the tone off early as a defender like that is so important to for the rest of the game. As you can see, St. Clair just wasn't able to find those spaces in behind and whether they're trying or not they that fear has been struck from the beginning and showing how strong she is and that one those one v ones and rating the play she's really set the tone and not had to do ju just as much as she had to in the first half but she can credit herself for that one and we're in the 90th minute and there'll be two minutes of added time We see a Seneca free kick here. Turn about 30 yards out. Quite central. As uh, Peralta Fernandez lines up for this one. Scotland Vic setting up her wall. Three person wall. Peralta Fernandez lines for this one. Has a shot on target. And Scotland Vic gets to that one. and. Saves it out for a corner. Not too threatening, but definitely on target. And forcing Fick there to come down and purry that one away. Parry that one away for a corner. And with the score the way it is here, only two minutes left, you know, good chances that this one will end in the favor of Seneca. Obviously, you know, we've seen crazy things happen, but Seneca Sting, I mean, they've just dominated this entire game and Looks like, again, like I mentioned earlier, it'll be a rematch of last year's provincial partner, and that should be a really, really good game to watch. Yeah, and especially after this game's gone on so long, it may not be as physically demanding as a game that would have run for almost two, over two hours, but mentally, mentally it is quite draining when you are out on the pitch longer than you're, than you're used to. This game started at about 4 o'clock. It's about 6.30. And the only time you're ever on that pitch for that long is when you go into extra time or penalties. And not having to do that you may not run the legs as long, but mentally the Seneca team may be a little tired after this one. Doing a little bit of history, partner. The last time Seneca or Humber didn't medal, either team, was in the 05-06 season. It was Fanshawe, Sheridan, Mohawk. Every other year, Humber <laughs> or Seneca have at least medaled in the top three. Yeah, and that goes to show the, the dominance of these programs and how strong they are year in and year out, uh, able to come back and rebuild some of their strong teams. And definitely one of the strongest teams in recent years for Seneca through great coaching staff and players here assembled, really showing that the result is a reflection of the gameplay that we saw here today. And there's the final whistle. That'll do it here. The matchups for tomorrow are set. Medal day. You'll have the St. Clair Saints taking on the Durham Lords for the bronze. And then the gold medal match tomorrow at 4 p.m. will include the Seneca Sting taking on the Humber Hawks. And partner, that should be a phenomenal final game. You have one of the best offenses taking on one of the most complete teams we've seen all year long. And uh, I mean, it's going to be a doozy to watch. Yeah, and I think uh, this final matchup will be a much deserved and very well predicted, I think, overall matchup in the finals between definitely the two strongest teams so far. 
Humber Hawks, a very tactically and organized team with many talented players. And you can say the same about Seneca, especially after the result from today. And if you're St. Clair, I mean, don't hang your head. You played a tough game against a really good offensive team. Also, you, you know, in the back of your mind, you had one of, of your course. teammates that had to obviously be taken out of the game early. It's always difficult after, as Again, my yeah. partner here said it and mentioned it. For any player who's played in any game and had to deal with a teammate's injury throughout a game, it's always difficult to kind of pick yourself back up and mentally check yourself back into it, especially after such a long break, which was about 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, I believe the scoreline does reflect some of that Seneca power, but on the other hand, St. Clair was doing very, very well to withstand all that pressure and dealing with it, especially a special shout out to Fick, Scotland yeah. Fick. She had herself on really her head, yeah. as well as Layla Hudson, who was another great player for today. Some of the standouts for the St. Clair Saints. And, and again, obviously, you know, Alexis Constantine, she was the player that went down. Yeah, we keep from everybody, our thoughts. Yeah, from everybody here at HSN, we hope that she has a speedy recovery and that she'll be back on the pitch very, very soon. But again, we will, not sure if we're going to have a player of the match presentation done here. Just waiting to see if the teams are going to line up at all. I'm not, again, not 100% sure, but it's now time for the players. yes, we are going to have one. So we'll hand it over to PA announcer Dwayne Bowles, and he'll give the player of the, game, player of the match awards. And a good shout out to the referees as well, managing this game very well. And uh, despite some of that confusion and everything, everything was handled very well. So good to see you here today. And who are your shouts here today for the players of the game? I think, I mean, it's torn between two players kind of for each team for me. You look at the side of Seneca, you got to look at Kayla Uttenberg. She had a phenomenal game, but also kind of look at Jessica Shears. And for the side of St. Clair, I mean, look at Fick. I mean, Fick had a phenomenal game. Layla Hudson on defense. And there, there it is. Go. Well deserved. Great game from her. And she showed that she not only can play at the right back position, but along that back line at left center back, being very solid, many last minute tackles, last ditch tackles. And without her, this game could have easily been a few more goals in Seneca's favor. Yeah, and I think the key thing is, you know, she shut down the MVP of the year. Exactly. Yeah, no doubt there. I mean, Jessica Shears was all over this game. I mean, she did so much work for her squad, got rewarded with the goal in the late stages of the match. But, yeah, I mean, I got, it was pretty clear to see who was yeah, exactly. going to be the players and in the games there. A bit unfair there for Kayla Edinburgh, who did have a wonderful game, but honest and uh, right backs aren't usually able to get that many goals. But that first goal was the most important. And let's have a look here. The player of the game here, cooking up in the middle. Sending a beautiful chip through ball in behind for the overlapping Uttenberg with the left foot finish showing that throughout the game she could use both feet and having that attacking instinct to get in those danger areas is wonderful. So beautiful finish opening up the scoring after a tied up first half which was 0-0 until the very end of it. That goal only came in the 45th minute so that goes to show how well Sinclair defended up until that point. You can see they're just buried as Scotland Fick was left out on an island to try and save that one. Yep, and again, like I mentioned, that'll do it for the semi-finals action. We have the medal matchup set. Bronze medal, St. Clair taking on the Durham Lords and the gold medal match, the Seneca Sting. They're gonna try to get the revenge on the Humber Hawks, the reigning defending provincial champions. Join us here tomorrow. First game at 1 p.m., bronze medal match, and at 4 p.m., the gold is on the line. From Zach Benoit and Federico Leal and all of us here at HSN, we hope you have a phenomenal rest of your evening.